Oh, man. How do I even share this thing? So, I literally don't know how to share this. God, son of a... All right, so don't know how to share this. So for those of you that are joining in, I'm having a scotch live because I could not finish the freaking edit in time. Oh, we got nine pallets of GK Tech in today. So there's that. It's like negative two degrees here in Albuquerque right now. So there's also that. So now I'm just drinking some warming, delicious scotch and hanging out on the internet. What's up, my peoples? I see you in that chat. Where and how, how do I share this freaking video on Facebook? I literally don't even know. Yeah, dude, it gets freezing here. We had snow and ice uh, all Thanksgiving, and right after Christmas, it snowed. So... Sati, you in Taos still or what? What's up, dude? Just got back from Durango last night. We got to shred the gnar. It was good. I'm sitting here drinking some uh, Glenlivet Code. This stuff is uh, popping fresh. Got it for my birthday from my wife. So super stoked on that. Also chugging back some Warsteiner. I know that's not how you say that, but you know, whatevs. I am trying to figure out how to share this link. Dude, that's awesome. Uh, Durango had like a foot and a half. We were pretty stoked on it. It wasn't, and it was a bluebird day. So it was good. It was, it was nice. It was good. I still want to go to Taos. So I just haven't done so yet. Okay, finally got the freaking link. I'm going to go ahead and share this on the old facey space. Whoa. Okay. I'm sharing it. Oh, yeah, Ryan. Get that GK tech. Dangle that angle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Damn, Andrew, that's the that's the future. I'm doing email blasts in my sleep. What's up, Tom? Good to see you. Down under. Doing a shoey. Not doing a shoey. I'm just kidding. Megs, what's up? Uh, I should be actually on New Year's Eve. Talk to your boy sexed me you know what i'm saying miguel what do i think about the gk tech woolwood dual caliper brackets i actually like the z32 better like i like the z32 calipers better i think they do a better job of clamping the woolwoods are really good um i just feel like the the z32 ones clamp a little bit better so going with the full rear knuckle setup would be more advantageous. You get the drop knuckle and you get the Z32 brakes, which are cheaper and in my humble opinion, better. Well, you can sign up for anything about me that you want. I am yours. Hmm. Abalore. I have some of that in the old scotch collection. One day, maybe I'll take everybody on a tour of how many scotches I freaking acquired from doing this show. I'm pretty sure I have around 40 single malts now, which is nuts. Oh, I'm an idiot. But this code, if you guys get a chance to get it, you're supposed to go online and scan this stuff. I just, I don't. It just tastes good. I don't need I don't need the internet to make me happy. 
Actually, I guess I do. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Um, yeah, first fill, cast strength, always up. Floyd, what up, my dude? How you doing, man? Scotching. Beerin'. Mm. I'm also uh, Warsteinering. Astro. Dude, Mikey, what's up, man? How you been, bud? I miss the car scene here, and I miss having you in the car scene. And Oh, man. Yeah, that's true. This has been chilling. We've gone to Costco a few times since then. <laughs> that was so random. I was just like, oh, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? But yeah, just hanging out. I filmed Scotch and a Beer. I just finished it. I'm talking about how shitty SEMA was for me in 2013. There were a few good things that came out of it, but for the most part, I got denied like 854,000 times. I even talked to like off-brand Chinese glove companies and they were like, no, we don't want to sponsor you. So screw that. Get out of my face. Get out of my booth. But we had a few good meetings and uh, had some words with the, the old agent, my $10,000 agent that I hired. So it'll be a good one. Oh, Ryan, man, you got to upgrade your beer game, dude. I mean, this anything else than PBR. I mean, come on. That's the beer they sell for like 50 cents on most nights at some bars. But I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. I'm so glad that you guys enjoy the show. I want to keep doing it, but I also have damn life. We got nine, like I said, we got nine pallets of GK Tech, so I've been uh, dealing with that all evening. Um, we also had like a hundred and something orders today, so thank you guys for ordering GK Tech parts. Keeps me busy. And uh, the wife is out with her Czech friends at uh, the River of Lights, which is this thing they do here in Albuquerque, and I'm just hanging out. Yeah, man, still here. Still here, hanging out. I moved from my old house, but I am currently... Still in Albuquerque. Don't know how much longer I'll still be in Albuquerque, but I'm here for now. Um, currently also building a new gaming computer slash editing rig on that thing right there. I'm learning how to uh, I'm learning how to bend this tubing, which is like mandrel bending for people that can't weld or work with metal. So I'll take it, whatever. It's going to be complicated and look like an octopus, but whatever. I'm into it. Um, yeah. 30 packs or 20 bucks. Yeah, that's true. Everybody, grab a drink. If you're not drinking on scotch and a beer, you're doing it wrong. You need to be grabbing some sort of a beverage. Let's talk gaming. I know if you're on the internet, most of you are probably into games. What are you playing right now? Lay it on me. I need to know. Stifon. Have fun with Red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have this cheap Amazon heating gun that I've been using the living crap out of. It works absolutely fantastic. And... You put in these long snakes of, uh, fuck, I just lost my total train of thought, silicone. You put the silicone inside there, you heat it up, it gets floppy, and then you bend it into the positions that you need to bend it into. And that's basically it. It's just, I'm always like an inch and a half off, which is the story of most men's life. <laughs> and uh, I have to redo the tubes. Luckily, I bought a bunch of tubes because I knew I was going to suck at it. Seto Rainbow Six Prominence Poker. Ooh, poker player. Never been good at poker. Just can't do it. Rocket League, Modern Warfare, GTA 5, Seto Corsa. See, I have a wheel set up and I reinstalled a Seto recently. And then I immediately started building this computer because this one's from 2013. And now the table for building the computer is taking up all my space and I can't play it. 
I have been playing League of Legends team fight tactics for some reason. I don't even play regular League of Legends anymore. I just play team fight tactics. Uh, yes, that's what I'm doing. And the reason why I am upgrading my computer to VR specs and my wife just got me a Oculus Rift S for Christmas also on top of this wonderful thing from a birthday. Happy. Um, yeah, I'm still going to upload the full episode. So this is just kind of filler because YouTube wants me to do something every Monday because that's the day I chose to do this. I just couldn't do it. Um, but anyway, I am ready for... God damn it, I just forgot it. Holy shit. I'm building this computer for one game and I just totally forgot what game it's Half-Life. I'm doing this literally for Half-Life 3. So I am building this whole computer for Half-Life 3 because it's only going to be VR. But yes, Will, I'm going to get Beat Saber because the wife wants to play that. So as soon as this... I'm waiting on some parts for AliExpress <laughs> to finish it because I'm a cheap bastard. And then I am going to finish building it and play Beat Saber until fall or until Half-Life 3 comes out because I love Half-Life. It's one of my favorite games ever. I've never played Apex Legends. Um, yeah, I'm going to edit the video tomorrow. It'll be out around this time tomorrow so it's going to be it, it's a good one it's all about SEMA and how different SEMA is when you're going as a fan or as a business than going as a, an athlete trying to solicit sponsorships from companies and how devastating it can be to your ego <laughs> because you literally talk to 150 companies a day and they're like no you suck and you're like I just want to cry I hate you, but there's a, it's a good, it's a good episode. It's just, uh, and then the parties, that's the real reason why people go to SEMA is the parties anyway. Oh man, Diablo, Floyd, let's play. I play on Switch and I play on PC. So I love Diablo. Mm -hmm. Love it. Later, Chris. Uh, I'm just hanging out, man. I filmed scotch and a beer. I got the, the rig going. I just, there's no way I can edit it in time for me to put it out at a decent hour. So it's going to be out tomorrow around this time. So I'm literally just hanging out, drinking a Warsteiner and the code scotch, which I'm going to pour some more of right now. So Whoa, shit. Lost the cork. Cork down. Okay, so the other cool thing I got this is an anniversary gift. It's a hand blown, I know it looks like a crack pipe, but it's a water dropper. So you drop a couple of like that into your scotch, and it's from Scotland. So it's a hand blown glass piece from Scotland. Anniversary gift. My wife is awesome. And then you enjoy your waterized scotch. Oh. Oh, Mikey. Yeah, you definitely need to do astronomy. I would tune into that post haste and listen to you talk about stars for hours. For those of you that don't know, Astro Mikey and I had go way back to even before I was into drifting when I was just a dude on an internet forum with WRX. That was me. My screen name was I hate E Y E H A T E, which it pretty much still is to this day on everything that I do online. And that is a weird story as well. How many of you guys remember Napster? And let that one sink in. Anyway, I got kicked off Napster by Sony for downloading Rage Against the Machine, and I was really upset. So I changed IP addresses and had to do all this stuff to get back onto Napster. And my new screen name on Napster was I Hate Sony, E-Y-E-H-A-T-E-S-O-N-Y. 
And eventually I dropped the Sony part and then my name became I Hate. God, this was like 99, 2000. So old school. Yeah, I know, but it's only certain things from AliExpress. Like, uh, all of my my fittings. These fittings are like four dollars a piece in the U.S., and I got a twenty pack for fourteen dollars shipped. So as long as they don't leak all over my stuff, which I'm going to thoroughly test before, I ordered most of my fittings. And a couple of reservoirs that I'm waiting on. Uh, and then I should be ready to finish building this thing. I'm also filming that. So there's going to be a whole build on this thermal take core P5, whatever the hell it is. Open chassis, fully water-cooled monster. So that's going to be pretty cool. been documenting that pain in the ass. Especially having to wait for stuff from China. Oh. Ben, what's up, my dude? Miss you. Love you. I'm just, we're, I'm literally just hanging out. I'm not even telling a story this time. I'm actually just hanging out, drinking a scotch and a beer with my internet buds. Oh, stop it, Floyd. I'm out of here. I know, right? I'm an idiot, but that's that's my whole story about why my screen name is I Hate Everywhere Else. Yep. See, even on the forums, every forum, like I'm Nazi, I'm sub 1000. Yeah. I think I'm like 700 on Naziok, which is the North American Subaru owner and present Subaru and present owners club Naziok. Um, so I'm a sub 1000 on that forum because I've been posting on there for years. I like Subarus, but I don't own any anyway, whatever. Yeah, no CPUs. Uh, AMD Ryzen uh, 9 something. Let me BRB. CPU is a, yeah, Ryzen 9 3900 for 34,000. 734. Um, yeah, so I'm stoked. I've always been an AMD guy. All three of my computer builds have been AMD since the get-go. And then I have purchased a Radeon 5700 XT Nitro Plus that is going to be liquid cool. So taking apart a freaking $500 graphics card and then slapping a water cooling block on it was the most stupid thing I've probably ever done because if this thing doesn't work I'm just gonna cry <sighs> whatever so pretty stoked on that though but it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be awesome uh, it's gonna be neon where where was I I don't even know where my neon jug is but I had a neon jug of coolant looking stuff. So everything's going to be black. The coolant is going to be neon. It's going to look good. It's going to be cryo cooled too. So it's going to be peltier devices mixed with regular radiator cooling. Because so you can see the fans on the radiator right there. Um, and then there's a cryo cooler below that. You can see the peltiers right there. Those are Peltier devices, and they're going to cryo cool. So it's going to be a radiator feeding into the cryo cooler, and I'm try I'm going to try to be idling at like nine degrees Celsius. It's going to be awesome. It'll be awesome. Yeah, four a.m. hangs. Sup, race cars, man. I'll tell you what. Yeah, dude, Naziak, old school. Old freaking school. Oh my God. I need to share this to my. Oh wow, I'm on a big screen. That's awkward. 
<laughs> Somebody just sent me a Mikey just sent me a screenshot of me on his big screen <laughs> holding up my graphics card. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. It's it's it is stupid, actually. It's a it's a crazy power draw. Like I have to have a 1200 watt power supply just to power the Peltiers mostly. And then there's a little bit left over for everything else in the system. It creates a tremendous amount of heat. It is the least efficient way to cool a computer ever. But I just, I've always been like attracted to Peltier devices just because it's really hot on one side and really cold on the other side. And there's some science in there. And I like that science that happens. <laughs> then it cools your computer. So there, it, it ran on the system that I'm using now that I'm currently streaming from. And I think my idle temperatures were around 16 or 17 degrees Celsius. And it like full tilt boogie rendering scotch in a beer, which is a 30 minute video, which is a really long render. It would cap out around 34 celsius so well 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 under the threshold and i actually overclocked this particular pc to 4.8 gigahertz back in 2013 with the cryo cooling so it was uh it was pushing some hertz and it's in its prime but it's it's old it's 2013 spec it's just needs an update so i'm gonna see how this works it might be a little too efficient and I might uh, have to warm it up a little bit. Sup, Austin? How you doing, man? Cook pizza and cool computer. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. I can dig that. Um, let me share this to my my other page. Share. Okay, I think it's shared. Kevin, you slacking son of a bitch. I don't know if you're watching, but I know that this dropper is uh, it's very phallic. If you didn't know, this is a scotch dropper, so you can take dropper. You can customize your water level for your scotch by just setting your finger out and doing that. Anniversary gift from the wife. Amazing. What's up, Victor? Just hanging out, drinking some scotch and some beer live. I filmed it, couldn't edit it. I'm sorry, suck at life sometimes. You know, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. So here I am. I'm just hanging out. Oh, man. So my buddy Anthony Barnes released a YouTube channel all oh, like two weeks ago. And he already has like 12,600 subscribers, which just makes me cry inside. So Melody, <sighs> how you guys doing? I know. I remember, I remember. Are you guys uh, in Albuquerque right now? Oh, I was gonna just ask. <laughs> Clearly you just answered. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's definitely negative two Celsius in Albuquerque. That was the temperature today. For those of you that don't know, it gets cold in the desert. It gets really cold in the desert. Oh, man, this is some good scotch. Again, for those of you that don't know, drinking the Glenlivet Code right now. Wife got it for me, and it is amazing. Yeah, it was super, super cold. Yesterday was even colder. Today, unloading nine pallets of GK Tech in sub-freezing weather was not my favorite thing to do. Still a little bit bitter, still a little bit cold. Damn it, I don't... I just have a... Uh, I got some plum trees in my backyard. I like plums. 
No plums. Plans for No Coast X is to not die. And not have anybody else die. That's that's my plans. I don't I don't know. It's so far ahead. I literally don't start thinking about no coast until like three months before the event. And even that takes a lot of energy and time. Um we'll definitely have the mechanical bull and I will add other things to no coast X. I don't know what, but I will definitely be adding things to no coast. I just don't know what they are yet. Yeah, it's, it's true. It, it's insane. Most people barely escape no coast with their lives, which if you're doing drift events where people aren't almost dying, you're doing it wrong. Shots fired. Um, I would like to do some sort of demolition derby, but the problem is, is that I don't want people to fuck their cars up. So I'll tend to hang off on that one. I know people want to do wheel to wheel racing and I'm so into that. Maybe I'll set up like a small autocross course and we've had that. We've strangely enough, we've the first like four no coasts, they just came to no coast there's a video where will norse and some other folks were filming and there were titties so it's it's it could happen it's it definitely could happen so we have had naked go-karting so other than mike fisher crashing on his ruckus scooter we've never had pit bike races but we have had naked go-kart races. You had to be naked, and if you weren't naked, then you did not complete the track. It's just what it is, you know. Naked go-karting at no coast. I need to bring that back. I would actually like to bring back naked go-karting at no coast, but nobody brings a go-kart anymore, so that just doesn't happen. But anyway... Um, I will be releasing scotch and a beer tomorrow night at around this time. So around seven 30 or eight o'clock, probably earlier. If I can get it edited faster, like I said, we got so many pallets of GK tech. It's just unreal. Um, so once I finish all of that, I can get right back into it. I don't even know what a game of table means. What does a game of table mean? What does that mean? What does it mean? Basil? I am quickly running out of beer. Vorsteiner. Um, yeah, 10 p.m.? Who does that? Who does 10 p.m.? Mikey, who even... Oh, 10 p.m. just makes me cry. But I've been to a lot of events where they shut it down at 10 p.m. I am not into those events. It makes me hurt inside. And I wish I was at no coast. And I'm not. I'm at another event and I'm quiet from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. when people start freaking revving their engines. My God. My God. So does anybody else snowboard? Any of you guys snowboard? Anybody? Hmm. I like that. Yeah, ASB. That was we were we were there. We were the reasons. We were the reasons why All Star Bash got shut down. Well, Matt Field was a big part of that. That's going to be an interesting scotch and a beer, which will be after this one. Technically, before for this one because i'm talking about sema which was in late october early november and all-star bash happened before that we got my car running again for all-star bash and we went out there and i had to zip tie a dude that's gonna be i i oh oh god that's gonna be a good one just all-star bash 20 
13 is going to be one of my best episodes, I think. No, hands down. That one was insane. That All-Star Bash changed everything. It shut All-Star Bash down. There was no more alcohol, no more partying after that. That was the last bastion for All-Star Bashes. And it wasn't our fault, but we were directly put into the situation that caused All-Star Bash to not work anymore. Which sucks, because I love All-Star Bash. I've been going since like 2010. I just, yeah, that was a nutty one. Wow. Man. Danny George's dildo was in full effect. You could smack that thing. He had it as a proximity device. Whew. That was an insane all-star bash. My God. Yeah. Stoked. That's going to be a good episode. I'm going to do that one. So I got to finish up SEMA. And I got to finish up how the... (laughs) How the agency tried to really fuck me out of more money don't get an agent god i'm an idiot anyway um the next episode is going to be about the rest of sema um the parties the lack of sponsorships the gain of a few sponsorships and then I'm going to go into All-Star Bash. I'm probably going to do my own version of No Coast Drift Party 3, um, where Jesse Wood filmed a Breaking Bad iteration of No Coast. So for those of you that liked Breaking Bad, let me find this. Coast Drift Party 3. This was the last no coast video that jwoodmedia.com would ever make for us so if you guys have a chance go check that out it is absolutely amazing it's one of the best drift videos i think i've ever seen um we did some really stupid stuff we went and we got shot at on an indian reservation filming in the exact location where they filmed the first breaking bad episode um the indians literally shot at us And then I blew my motor like two days later. So there were some bad jujus filming out in the res. Not recommended. Did you really? Dude, that's awesome. I've been a stunt double for many German people on Better Call Saul. I've never done, I never got to do anything on Breaking Bad because that was before I got into stunts. But. I have done lots of days on Better Call Saul, if anybody watches that show. It's been pretty interesting. I got shot in the head by Mike, which is kind of a bucket list thing, because Mike is, I think, one of the best characters in that entire series of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. He's my favorite. So if you saw the German guy get marched out into the desert and shot in the back of the head, that was me getting shot in the back of the head let me see if i can i think that video is out there let me see if i can find that better call saw german engineer killed wow there's already a people werner ziegler was the guy that i was doubling that scene and mike erman trout was the one that killed me don't know what video that was yeah that was me that was me getting shot in the head and then just eating dirt into the desert at four o'clock in the morning yeah there it is i think i found it give me a second yep this is it hold on you guys are going to see my second time ever being shot in the head as a stunt it was dramatic and beautiful all at the same time i always end up doubling like older uh there you go stunts hashtag stunts so watch that and skip to about 20 seconds in i'm actually watching it right now Ooh. 
I think I did pretty good. I think I did pretty good. But that's going to be a really, really, really interesting scotch and a beer when I talk about how I actually got into stunts it was because of Formula D. And that is a completely whole different other story altogether. And just my Formula D career is going to be such a shit show. <laughs> like, that is going to be insane. But yeah, so that was me dying on Better Call Saul. I have doubled, uh, what's the lawyer's name? Somebody refresh me on the, the other lawyer's name that was his partner. I can't remember that dude's name. But I've doubled him for some driving stuff. Um, that was fun. I think his name is Patrick Fabian. Yeah, Patrick Fabian. So I've doubled Patrick Fabian on some episodes driving his green Jag. And uh, that... I got killed and then I got punched in the face by Mike in some later episodes. And there's also some episodes that I can't talk about that were for the season that's coming out now that were pretty insane as well. So that's pretty cool. I also was in the Breaking Bad movie. If any of you guys saw that, I was one of the cops that was driving down the dirt road right in the opening scenes. That was a, an interesting time. So got to be in the Breaking Bad movie as well. Awesome. That was fun. Who are these? What's happening here? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's super awesome, Mikey. Just saw your picture. Hey, man, I'm just chilling, Mikey. I'm, I'm hanging out. I, I like to party. I like to do different things. I, I It's so awesome not having a day job, but having like 20 different things that you do that are all satisfying in their own way. And all of that comes because of drifting, which is the stupidest thing that I could have said because drifting is stupid in itself, but I love it to death. And I wouldn't get to do all of the cool shit that I get to do if it weren't for drifting. I have so many videos with so many weird things to show you guys. And it just gets so much more insane as like Formula D was kind of the unlocking point for all of that. And it's just gotten crazier since. It's it's amazing. I'm so thankful that I had drifting in my life and I'm out of scotch. Hmm. And I think I'm out of beer. But I'm going to get some more. This is great. The code. Thank you, wife. Yeah. Third glass of scotch. We're doing things tonight here, people. We are doing things. No, I uh, I 110% believe that you got held up at a grocery store. Like, there's literally no doubt in my mind that that happened. Three drops. I'll take three drops of water in that one. So when I first moved to Albuquerque back in, like, 2005, I cut a dude in a lowrider off. He pulled a gun on me and then he threw a handful of change out at my car. Like, and I was in my WRX. I had just got my WRX. It was only three years old at that time. I was really pissed. So I slammed on the brakes in front of him, cut him off. And he, again, him and his homie this time flashed the gun at me. And then I just took off. And that was like three days after moving to Albuquerque. I know, right? I actually, this thing is so haggard. The plastic is coming out. I brought this back from the depths. And man, I I love this beanie. I don't know why. I bought this in a, a Walmart one time when I was in California. When it was really cold for some stupid reason. And I needed a beanie. And this was an emergency purchase. And I've had it ever since. 
And now I feel like one of those Abercrombie hats that's like pre-frayed that you buy in the store. And I just, I love this beanie. I've just had it for, fuck, almost 20 years. Holy shit, this is a 20-year-old beanie. I'm just going to drink this scotch and pretend that I didn't say that. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, typical day in Albuquerque, getting shot at, guns, knives, stabbings. I've been in Albuquerque since I moved here in 2004. I have been held up for my wallet two times. I have had a gun pulled on me in traffic six times. I have had my truck stolen out of my driveway. That was a truck that ran on grease. It was one of my favorite trucks ever, and I really, really miss it now. I have had Jonathan. Love you. Love you. You and Will, thank you for joining in. You guys are the best. I have had my current truck broken into six times. I and and people are breaking into it and then they find out that it's a manual transmission and then they don't steal it anymore. So the manual transmission has kept my truck from getting stolen six times in Albuquerque. I totally pulled an American History X and chased a dude in my underwear down the street in a bat that was trying to break into my roommate's car. Probably one of the dumbest things that I've ever done. Um Oh my God, Albuquerque is just ridiculous. It's just one of those towns that you never know what's going to happen. You literally never know what's going to happen. Yeah, that makes sense. You, you just, the shit just happens and you're just like getting gas or like buying a Coke or eating some M&Ms and some dudes getting held up and you have no idea that it's even happening. Oh, man. <laughs> Did it have the stupid bear on it from Santa Fe? <laughs> I, I I am literally just wearing this because it's such a throwback. Like, I found this beanie the other day, and it made me so freaking happy. Like, I have a lot of good memories with this beanie. So, I'm, I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing the, the Brim's beanie back. Maybe the dumbest thing I've ever done, but fuck it. You know, I'm drinking scotch on the internet, so whatever. Mikey, we technically did. We moved to BFE Albuquerque, which is like Eubank and Academy. It changed everything. We were going to leave. We were going to move to Vegas. Now we're staying because we've uh, moved on. It's Albuquerque has gotten better since moving over here. I'm currently fixing my old house up to sell it. It's a slow process. I suck. Hey, Mad Max, I'm glad you liked Jay Wood's video. Jay Wood slays it. Don't know if you knew, but Jay Wood is the guy that edits most of the Donut Media videos. So if you've seen one, that's Jay Wood. He is the reason why they exploded. Their video content went from here to here, like beyond the charts because of Jay Wood. So Jay Wood freaking slays it. Absolutely hands down. Oh man, the, the rollover vid that I posted on Instagram, that one was uh <laughs> god damn it, so stupid. Uh that was in 2012. That was my 240SX with Ernie in the car holding his iPhone in a full Russian accent. After my head went out the window and smashed the roll cage on the way back in, I was slightly concussed and continued the Russian accent and said, holy fuck balls, we done flipped it. And are you okay, guy? Fully in this character that I had made up in my head from my concussion and Ernie didn't respond and I thought he was dead. I didn't look at Ernie. I didn't want to make eye contact. I thought maybe Ernie got squished by the other side of the car. And I was like, God damn it. Yeah, that dude sucked. 
that's a whole different other story. Um, the one good part about Albuquerque is we have really cheap drift events and a rad track that lets us basically get away with murder. So it's a toss up. Um, but anyway, I thought I killed Ernie. We were in the car and I said, are you okay? And he didn't respond. And I was like, oh my God, I just killed Ernie Veal. I killed Edub. What have I done? I not only flipped my car like 500 times, even though it was only once, but like 500 in the car, but I killed Ernie V Hill and we did the full flip rotation. Yes, we did full flip rotation. Um, it's okay. We fix it. We get, we get new chassis. We built new car. No big deal. Even though I was crying on the inside, I had just totaled my S 13. Ernie had gotten the wind knocked out of him and he didn't say anything to me. And that was it. He was fine. He just had to get the wind back in him. And he was like, yeah, I'm okay. And I was like, oh, thank God. I didn't kill Ernie. Oh, my God. I did not want to kill Ernie V. Hill. That was, uh, that was a bad one. No Coast Drift Party X will be. That's the t-shirt right there. No Coast Drift Party X. Holy fuck bulls. That's a good one. I think I'm going to do that. That is going to be the No Coast Drift Party X. I know, dude, I only had that car for like four months and then I flipped it and totaled it and sold it to the scrapyard for $40 in scrap metal. Oh, to this day. What's up, Floyd? Welcome back. We're still hanging. We're, we're, I'm on scotch number three. We're starting to get toasty. Everything's fine. Everything's good. It's, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. I love everything. It is the day before New Year's Eve. That Jeep was rad. You know what's funny is I still see it around town every once in a while. It's not blue anymore, but I still see it around town. The guy that bought it for me flipped it three days after buying it down a hill, put a different colored roof on it, and he actually came to No Coast 5. Crazy crazy who got $40 good scotch Mikey fill me in dude I miss that Jeep I do I love the forerunner but I do miss the Jeep the Jeep has way more personality hands down dude Ryan are we on the same wavelength did we just become best friends because Shiner Holiday Cheer is literally the best beer ever made. The last two Scotch and a Beers have been the beer with the Shiner Holiday Cheer because I love it so goddamn much. I have wow, I just shook my I just put my hands down so hard I shook the camera. I have four 24 packs of Shiner Holiday Cheer sitting in my cabinet. I have a 12 pack in the refrigerator. I absolutely goddamn love that beer. Scotty, we're going to do it. We're going to Tetris one of these nights. I mean, you can come over right now if you want. We're going to play Rock Band later if you want to join in. They're out at River of the Lights right now. River, River of Lights? River of Life. Lights. Whatever. Three scotches deep and I can't even talk. God damn it. Mm. it's good though it's real good though um but yeah so come over one of these nights we'll figure it out we'll play some tetris let's do it everybody scotty fox playing in a new band called all thick which is a joke on the way new mexicans talk be wicks guys a legend has entered the arena. Brandon Wicknick. How do I get people to join this thing live? Brandon, you got a webcam? What's up? Let's get Brandon and Scotty in here. And then it could be a Mormon versus a vegan. <laughs> versus an alcoholic that loves scotch. 
Oh man, I appreciate it. I l- l- literally thank you from the bottom of my heart for not playing a set of Corsa and hanging out with me instead. I appreciate it. It's fantastic. Brandon, talk to me. What's up? Oh my God. There's so many cool people in here right now. Oh, the Parsons are here, everybody. They go to No Coast every year, and sometimes they cook really good food, but they're just awesome. They borrowed my shovel, and they shipped it back in a vacuum box. It was great. Love them. Will and Morgan, thank you guys for joining in and just hanging out. Literally just drinking some uh, Glenn Livet Code. Michaela, my wife, bought this for me for either Christmas or my birthday. I can't remember. And so that's what I'm sipping on. Uh, she also got me this uh, very phallic looking crack pipe that you use to pluck a small amount of water and drip it in. So that's what I'm doing. Just to recap real quick. Brandon, what do you want to know? Ask me something. Ask me something and I will tell you a story right now, live. I've been telling little stories all night. Talked about how I'm building a computer. Talked about a little about All Star Bash 2013, which I can't really talk about too much because it was such an insane story. I need to have you film a video for me for that one because you were a gigantic part of that. And the reason why people can't drink at All Star Bash is because of your trailer. Because of Brandon Wicknick's trailer, everybody. And a meth head. And that's all I can say. Anything else, Brandon? Let's go. Give me a subject. Yeah, Brandon. Brandon. Tell us <laughs> how many shirts did you sell in Seattle? Uh, Formula Drift in 2014. Brandon, come on, live for the people. Give me uh, how many shirts you sold. B. Wicknick. So this is going to be something else I'm going to talk about. One, there it is, everybody. Brandon Wicknick sold one T-shirt. Seattle. Brandon, you don't have an online store. I would buy a shirt from you right now if you had an online store. I'm just saying. I love Brandon Wicknick. Who doesn't love Brandon Wicknick? Say it in the chat. Because if you don't love Brandon Wicknick, I'm not sure we can be friends. Single tire size rule in Pro 1 is a good idea. I... Oh, man, that's a tough one. I think that I think that a max tire size would be good because with the weight thing, people just pad their freaking cars and fill their roll cages with lead until they hit a certain weight to get to a certain tire size. I think that's bullshit. I think you shouldn't be able to do that. Absolutely not. I think a like I think a 265 limit on tire size and formula d would be fine you can run up to a 265 if you choose to run a 265 do it Ooh, will what's up b wicks second place see brandon put your goddamn shirts online i am so out of beer right now i'm just gonna Drink these ship. Brandon, my guy. Let's talk. Dude, all of my shirts are out of stock right now because I don't keep a stock of my shirts. I am an idiot. Oh, I need to bump Whiskey Garage up, but I've been so busy with GK Tech, I don't have time to do Whiskey Garage. And I need to. I literally only sell Whiskey Garage shirts when I go to an event live, which is basically limited to the Southwest. <sighs> I suck sometimes. God damn it. This scotch is so good. 
And this is one of my favorite scotches. Because, Brandon, ugh, I don't know. I just, I suck. Again, I just, I, when people used to make an order, I would have to print one shirt and then I would back out. Oh my God, Taka Aono just liked the link I shared for this video. Guys, Taka Aono is a goddamn legend. He's coming to No Coast Drift Party 10. Taka Aono. No Coast Drift Party 10. Anyway, yeah, I suck. Basically, is the bottom line. Brandon knows this. Brandon, Brandon and I at Formula Drift were always the underdogs. And it's really funny because I think Brandon Wicknick set the if there was a Guinness world record for people that um Taka I, I, I don't know if he's watching, he just liked the post. I don't think he's actually watching the video, but he liked the post. And that's all I care about is that Taka Ono liked one of my posts. <laughs> um anyway, Brandon Wicknick at Formula D ran Formula Drift for cheaper than anybody else on this entire planet. Um, they slept in his trailer. It was him and his crew were like an enigma to everything that Formula Drift wasn't. And I think that was a gigantic problem with Formula Drift because Formula Drift doesn't want that. Deep down... Uh, yeah, and Brandon would use the used tires off of other drivers. God damn it, I forgot about that. I love Brandon so much. Brandon is one of my favorite humans on this entire planet. Scotty, first. Brandon would be maybe like fifth. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, God. Well, Scotty helps everybody do everything. That's why Scotty is amazing. Anyway, no, I, I love Brandon a lot. We spent a lot of time, even when I was Danny George's spotter, we would hang out with Brandon. And then in Formula D, Formula D treated Brandon like shit because Brandon wasn't a large money entity. He, oh God, it sucks. It made me so angry. They would put Brandon at the very end of the pit row just because they didn't want people to go over there. And it made me so freaking angry every time because then I had to walk farther and they always put me near Dan Burkett because our names were close together not be anyway whatever yeah that's true Jose was awesome but they still put you at the fucking ass end of the pits every goddamn time so many people tuned your car Brandon and that's probably why it caught on fire in Florida I'm just regular Dan. Red Dan is Red Dan. He has a mullet and a Supra. And when we were pit next to each other, I spent more time explaining to people that that wasn't my car. And so I just gave up and was like, yep, that's my car. I'm Red Dan. It's true. Will, we know this. You broke my foot when we were in the very back of Texas. And that's your goddamn home track. That's going to be a really good episode of Scotch and a Beer is when Will Parsons broke my ankle at Formula D Texas. Oh, God, I have so many stupid stories to tell everybody. Holy shit. Oh, God. Brandon and Will, two of my favorite humans that were in Formula D as drivers. I'm so glad I got to share that time with you guys. I didn't do shit, but it was good having you there. <laughs> Cheers to that. And Brandon is Mormon, so technically he's not having a scotch or a beer. Brandon, what are you drinking right now? Do you have a water? Do you have a seltzer? Some ginger ale? Dr. Pepper. Ooh, Scotty. 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 Brandon's drinking Dr. Pepper. That's how you know it's good. That's how you know it's amazing. My God. Yes, I agree. That was the class of awesome. We had a good time at a Formula D. No ifs, ands, or outs about it. 
I know. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If my name wasn't so close to Rad Dan, they would have shoved me back with you guys. And you guys are always so far in the goddamn back. The only reason why I got pit next to Rad Dan is because our names were close. No other reason. Stupid. There's so many politics in Formula D that, that come into play that really, really help or hurt somebody that you never think about. But that's one of them being put in the area where no fans want want to go. If you don't have fans, you got nothing. In Formula D, at least. Or when you're doing scotch and a beer for 22 people live. That's what you're doing with your life on December 30th, the day before New Year's Eve. Man, those were some adventures. I cannot wait to start getting into Formula D. I still have so many scotch and a beers. I got No Coast Drift Party 3. I have All-Star Bash 2013. That's going to be its own episode. I have my car build for Formula D 2013. That's going to be its own video. And then actually going to Long Beach and losing my entire drift team, my manager, my mechanic, my ride, everything. I literally went to one round of Formula Drift and lost my entire team. That's going to be a whole other episode on its own. That's a sad one. That still makes me sad to this day. I should probably drink some of this water. Oh, Australia. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, that's right. Brandon, you guys could have a drum off. When are you coming here? Let's play rock band right now. Brandon, get on the road. Actually, dude, I can't even say it, but Brandon, when you're in town, Scotty, come over. Brandon's going to be here on the 23rd, 22nd, 22nd or 23rd. Let's play rock band. You guys can have a drum off. Dude, Andy, what's up, dude? Andy, Green FC, killing it. He's so spooky. Um, okay, so back to the random Australia story. So I went to Australia for a, a demo, and I wrecked a car. I got to drive an R32. Tom, he was in here earlier. I don't know if he's still in here now, but I wrecked his car. I felt absolutely horrible about it. But here's the random Australia story. I spent more time in airports than I did in Australia the first time I went to Australia because I was there for four days and then flew home. So it was a 16-hour flight there. I flew to, where did I land? Anyway, I went to visit Luke Fink, and then I went to visit Greg in GK Tech, Australia. For literally half a day, I went to a go-kart track, and then I flew to Tasmania, where I wrecked a dude's R32, which I felt absolutely horrible about, and bought him an entire new suspension system. And... At that track in Tasmania, I was in the shitter taking some of the most glorious poops I've ever had on the other side of the planet. And I'm sitting there and I look up and there's a huntsman spider staring at me from the goddamn ceiling. He's right there. I don't know what to do. He's looking at me like he wants to jump. I don't hate spiders, but they make me a little bit uncomfortable. Especially when they're this big and staring at you in a shitter. And I'm sitting there and we're having this staring contest. And of course he has eight eyes and doesn't blink. So he wins. And I look down for like two seconds to maybe like adjust my pants and go to a different stall. And I look back up and the huntsman's gone. Disappeared. Gone. WTF mate. 
Exactly, Mikey. Burn the... <sighs> so... I immediately pull up my pants, transfer stalls, finish my business, and get the fuck out of that porta potty because huntsman. So then that was like moment one of getting to Tasmania. And that was before I wrecked the dude's car. And anyway, so we're sitting in the driver's meeting and we're in the building inside a building, a, a populated building of this racetrack where you're supposed to have driver's meetings and Luke Fink is running the driver's meeting. And I look up and lo and behold, I think it was the same motherfucker looking at me from the goddamn corner. And I'm like, Luke, I'm pretty sure that this huntsman followed me from the shitter and is now in this room. And he's like, oh, no, I might. That's not the right thing. And I'm like, that's the same. He's got the same look in his eyes. He's right there. And he was like, harmless. And I was like, God damn it. But he's like eight feet long. And so we did the whole driver's meeting. And I was just staring at the spider in the ceiling. And everybody was in the seats listening to Luke talk. And I'm just staring at the spider, making sure he didn't fucking drop bear on me. So there was that. Then I wrecked the dude's car, which sucked. I just initiated and ended up in a wall. I don't even know how it happened. I'm an idiot. And I suck at driving. And then I did a shoey from some dude. And I was like, all right. I want the dude with the newest set of kicks in this motherfucker. Or I'm not doing a goddamn shoey. And so I found the guy with the newest kicks. And they poured a beer in it. And... I drank a goddamn beer out of that dude's shoe. The spider sucked, man. I'm telling you. Worst experience of Australia was the spiders. Pretty much all of them can kill you or they're gigantic and scary. We went to the Australia Zoo. This was a different trip to Australia. We went to the Australia Zoo and I read a sign that was like, in Australia, you're never more than four feet away from a spider. I'm just going to let that sink in. That is a disturbing thought. You don't want that in your life. Ever. Brandon, have you gone to Australia? Pour more scotch. This is for Brandon, everybody, because Brandon can't drink because he's Mormon. It's for you, buddy. But that was my random... Australia story. I would also like to say that Tasmania reminds me of Texas, like rural Texas, where you go out and you're just like, oh, hey, partner. And they're just like, yeah, I have sheep. And you're like, that's not even what I asked. But Brandon, you would die if you went to down under. Don't do it. Just don't. Another random Australia story. We recently went back and we went to Brisbane and we were on the beach and there were like 14 foot tall waves. So I couldn't go in the water. So then we went to Sydney and then we went to on a boat to this other beach on an island and we tried to go in the water and there were Portuguese man of fucking war everywhere. So you literally can't do anything in Australia without something trying to kill you. We we were sitting on the beach and I went and put my toe in the water and the surfer comes running out and she has a jellyfish wrapped around her ankle and she's like, oh, do you have any water? I need to wash this off. And I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure you need to go to a hospital. I don't even, how? Anyway, Australia is a dangerous place. That's the bottom line here. Should we or right? Um, icon? <laughs> oh, corporate, corporate sponsors. 
just because I'm loyal? I don't know. I've never worn a Shoei or an RI helmet. I don't even know what my current helmet is, to be honest. That's the, that's the bottom line here. <coughs> oh, God. I think I nailed it. Oh. <sighs> Brandon, don't you ever say that. How many no coasts have you been to, Brandon? Please enhance me in the chat. I'll wait. I do not need food. I like the Stilo helmets. They're a, a Frederick Osb sponsor. But I don't have a Stilo helmet. I approached them for sponsorship and they never wrote me back. Let's talk to my boy, Freddie. No, I don't know. I literally can't remember what helmet I have. I remember the logo, but I can't remember what it's actually called. Violent Soho. I'm going to have to check that out. I'm going to put it in Spotify right now so I can listen to it later. Dude, Michaela's not here, Scotty. There's not going to be a Beyond Burger delivered to my mouth anytime soon because she is at the stupid river of lights dude andy i know stilos are awesome and they look cool you look like a goddamn stormtrooper fuck i don't even have any helmets in here right now or i find one but i don't have any helmets um yeah brandon drink more dr pepper get on my level bro that's what matters. Pinky's out. Why am I on Western Digital's website? No, that's not what we need right now. Where are the... Yeah, Facebook. God, there's some shit going down with GK Tech. Why do I like the Z so much? Because it runs. I've done more laps in my Z than any car I have ever owned. I have a thousand laps in my Z, and I'm about to go on a 4,000 mile road trip with it. That's why. I don't. I like. No. I like my S13 more as a thought. I like the S13 more as a dream. I like the S13 more as a fantasy. I like the S13 more because it technically runs now and I got to do laps in it. Um, but I love the Z for what it is and it was absolutely worth every single penny I paid for it. Hands down. Oh, shots fired at Sean Guthrie. Oh, my God. I think that was one of the most belittling moments I've ever had in my life. Was at XDC Phoenix when Sean Guthrie decided that Matt Petty was stupid and wouldn't listen to what he said. Cut across the track, came into the pits, threw his helmet, told me that drifting was gay and that we all needed to grow up and drive real cars. That was a bad moment in my life. I felt like two feet tall. Oh my God. That was a bad one. Were you there for that, Andy? Were you there? Oh. That was so embarrassing. That was literally one of the most embarrassing moments that I've had in drifting, hands down. Dude, that's right. He was there. You were there. Fuck. Well, God, you, we just had an argument about if you were there or not. And you were totally there. And I told you you were there. God damn it. Dude, that was such a rough event for me. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Just hate me because I suck at remembering things. 
That's right. His wheel, the caliper cut the wheel in half. Fuck, God. That was, I loved that event, but that moment in time was the worst thing that I've ever had to experience in drifting because it was in, literally in front of everybody and including Matt Petty. And I look up to Matt Petty because Matt Petty is an event organizer and I am an event organizer. And that moment, what the shit even happened with that even real life? Oh, <laughs> I'm not even going to name names, Scotty, you dick. <laughs> Brandon, what the shit, man? Why haven't you sent me that? I already did that episode. Mikey, talk to me. Let's let's chat. We'll chat later. Brandon, please cut an edit. I will release that on my YouTube, and it will be goddamn fantastic and please tell me that you have a clip of sean guthrie throwing his helmet and telling us that we're all gay and we need to grow up and drive real cars like for real let's do that i'm totally down Ooh, tokyo tune in tokyo brandon we're going to collaborate. I think I think it's good. like I said, Brandon and I are going to be involved in this project that's coming up really soon and I think it's going to be Brandon and I hanging out most of the time and me being drunk and Brandon being pissed that I'm drunk. That's right, you totally did. Holy shit. Oh, well Brandon, you were busy being in your trailer way far away from us because it was Jim Guthrie and we were parked far away from you. I was really bummed about that. That was uh, an interesting one. Oh my God, dude, that flip over the hay, hay bale. I mean, at least my flip was off of an eight foot hill and I was just an idiot that I, I can't even explain flipping over a hay bale. How do you explain to people that you flipped over a hay bale? Scotty, that is going to be one of the best episodes of Scotch and a Beer ever, is where Will Parsons broke my ankle. And then I had to cruise around in a goddamn Walmart on a hover round. It's a rough time. Rough time. Dwayne. Oh my God, legends. <laughs> it's a pro three it's a pro three hoedown right now my friends we got will parsons we got Dwayne ramsey we got brandon wicknick oh my god this is amazing this makes me so happy yeah holy shit will you need to elaborate more on that story I remember uh, Matt Petty telling us how stupid that was and how pissed off he was and how, oh, my God. <sighs> Dude, we're not even pro three. We're pro four. Fuck it. We're, we've demoted ourselves to another level. Wicknick, let's take bets right now. I know you can't technically bet because you're Mormon, but let's take bets right now that Luke Fink wins everything that we do and makes Matt Field and Chelsea Denofa look like children. Tom, back. He's back in. Dude, we talked about you, Tom. I had a whole section on Tasmania. You missed it. You're going to have to go back and watch this video just for the Tasmania part. I talked about how shitty I was and I wrecked your car and then there was a spider in the bathroom and I freaked out. That's the real thing. So basically, Will Parsons almost died not even getting to the event. He was outside of the event at a stoplight leaving. And holy shit, he got it was ridiculous. 
It was ridiculous. See, that's what I'm saying. Luke Fink is going to destroy people, and everybody's going to be mad. Luke Fink won every single event in a stock G35. It's it, Luke. Luke. Let me bring this down for everybody that's still watching, which is 25 of you. There are 25 people watching this, and I want 25 people to bear witness to the words that I'm about to say. Luke Fink is the best drifter on this entire planet. You, you guys do not understand the level that Luke Fink is on. If you do not know who Luke Fink is, you should Google Luke Fink right now and watch Luke Fink's driving. We're about to do a thing with Luke Fink later on in January, and Luke Fink is going to make us look like children trying to tie their shoes for the first time ever. Luke Fink is... Uh, how do I explain Luke Fink? Luke Fink is the most casual human I have ever met in my entire life. Luke Fink is like... God. He wears flip-flops everywhere. And... If it would be a formal ball, Luke Fink would be the dude in shorts and flip-flops. That's Luke Fink. I don't... Ah, God, that's a tough one, Brandon, because I don't know. Luke Fink is... Uh, I think Luke Fink is too Luke Fink for corporations to appreciate. That's that's the only... Oh. That's the only thing that I can think of is fuck. Right? Luke looks awesome. Luke is amazing. Caleb, what's up, dude? Wait, no, lazy. You guys, if you don't know about the lazy Shaka, that's going to be in a later edition of Scotch and a Beer. But the lazy Shaka is you barely make any effort to do a full shaka which is hawaii for aloha or mahalo or whatever you make it lazy as fuck so it's american version i'll get into that later in scotch and a beer but that's the dude i know he won fucking winter jam it's ridiculous he's like oh i did a win and you're like just like god damn it it's fucking luke fink so anyway, we're supposed to do this project with Luke Fink later on this month, and I'm not super stoked about it because I'm literally going to be last place at everything, which is fine because I'll probably beat Brandon at least something. Probably not, actually. Brandon's going to beat me at everything. Right, dude? Uh, he's the literally one of the best. Later, bro. Dwayne, love you. Later, Shibi. Dude, tell Luke. I'm telling you, Tom, come. Let's do no coast. It'll blow your mind. It's a no coast drift party is like if Australia was on meth and maybe steroids. And that's no coast drift party. So please come. I can't even do fuel economy because I'm going to be in a Z towing a goddamn trailer. That's just not going to happen. Mental. Later. See ya. Love you. Thank you. Forza. Go do some skids. Everybody come to No Coast. Let's drink mm -hmm. scotch together in real life. Not on the internet. That's the bottom line here, my friends. Oh my god, the wife just got home from River of Lights. I'm on my third scotch. No, so I can't fit I cannot fit 10 wheels and tires to drive down to Texas in the back half of the Z, so I'm having to rent a U-Haul trailer and I'm going to tow that with the Z.
Oh, Morgan, that's so correct. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yep. Duke got his ear bit off at No Coast Drift Party 9 by a chick. That makes me so happy. Somebody came up and was like, dude, somebody bit somebody's ear off. And I was like, <laughs> that's so metal. It was the best. Brandon, you're not even coming to New Mexico. If you come by here, you should. Oh, my God, Lauder. Please bring Lauder. I will give him gasoline. I will give Lauder gasoline right now. Bring him to No Coast. I will do a shoey out of whatever boot you offer. Let's do this. Dude, the meth head. Fuck. I had to get down on my knee and talk this meth head off of a ledge from shooting everybody at no coast because he was like two and a half feet tall. That was a bad scene. That was a really bad scene. Dude, all thick is going to be the goddamn headliner. It's going to be metal, 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 all thick. That's just the the band. Brandon, please be in a band. Who else plays instruments? Come on. I'm going to make a post. I'm going to make a post in the No Coast Drift Party page that says who's in a band and wants to be with Brandon Wakening. Brandon, if you play country, I'm going to punch you in the dick. Don't play country. At least play like glam rock or something Banjo would be better than country, yes. Don't play country. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yes, a jug band with a washboard, everything. Okay, you've done it. You've you've uh, you've created it. If you did spoons, I would let you get up on stage and do a solo. Oh, and everybody, Brendan Wicknick up on the stage next for some spoons. And then it's just the least metal thing ever. Oh, you can play country and western. Yeah, Scotty, don't. On it. Dr. Pepper, country and western. Hank Williams? God damn. No Coast X is looking to be insane at this point we have an eight minute spoon solo <laughs> by brandon wicknick we got hank williams the third <laughs> and taka aono taka aono is going to be at no coast that's the only given at this point everything else is just hearsay i don't know if brandon is actually going to play spoons but i'm so pumped colorado brandon Brandon is drunk off Dr. Pepper right now, everybody. That's his prerogative. It's whatever. Colorado. I don't know. Yeah, Hank 3 shows up. There's going to be shotgun around every corner. And I'm pretty stoked on that, actually. I will totally take that. Not gonna lie, God, I wish Hank Three would pay play No Coast or like Merle Haggard or Willie Nelson. <sighs> Colorado would just smoke him alive, and he would just be like, "Oh my God, I don't understand what's even happening to my life right now." But yeah, that's not gonna happen. I can't afford that. No Coast is a poor event. We just make shit happen. Dude, Hank 3 at No Coast just makes sense. I'm going to write his God, I'm going to write I'm going to write him a strongly worded letter. And I'm going to say, "Please come play my stupid drift event." And he's going to be like, "No. You owe me $20,000 just for asking the question." Please, let's do a uh do a change.org. Let's get Slipknot to play at No Coast. Are you kidding me? 
these dudes want like 80 grand to play a show. And I'm like, uh, well, I got these guys that have been playing no coast for 10 years now. They play for free. I'm probably going to take the free over the 80 grand for Slipknot. Who, Hank Williams? You met Hank Williams? T talk to your boy. Talk to your boy. Tell him to come to No Coast. I'll give him a ride. Mike Tyson will bite the ear off of the dude that got his ear bit off by a chick. He will actually... Re Whoa. He will recycle that shit. He will recycle the ear that was already bit off of somebody and eat it himself. Well, uh, Andy, you got to have those digits, man. God damn it. Just be like, dude, I was this one guy that was at this one time when you did this one thing and you need to play this drift event. And maybe he will. Dude, reception, totally into it. If Mike Tyson came and bit that guy's ear off, he would have no earlobes left. <laughs> oh, Mike Tyson being vegan. That's a funny thought, considering he's a goddamn cannibal. Oh, shut up, Andy. God damn it. Brandon Wicknick's on here. Brandon Wicknick's way more famous than I am. Will Parsons, too. Will Parsons is a goddamn legend. Mm. It's a true fucking story. It's a true goddamn story. You're not wrong. True fucking story. Oh, Brian invited me to like All Thick. I'm going to go ahead and like that page. All Thick with two C's. New Mexico band, Scotty Don't, being the guitarist. Killing it. If fame is judged by number of shirts sold, I am 22 and a half shirts ahead of you, Brandon Wicknick. <laughs> no, you should have said I'm the most famous person to crash your car because I suck at driving. That's the real thing, Tom. Oh, God, I still feel so horrible about that. I'm such an idiot. Fuck. Mm. Dude, if Limp Biscuit played No Coast, I would do it all for the Nookie. Come on, the Nookie. Come on, the Nookie. Yeah, that would be Limp Bizkit. God damn it, Brandon. Drink some Dr. Pepper, have a sugar rush, get diabetes. I already finished my beer. I'm three scotches deep. Fred Durst is still alive, and he's my 14th best friend. I don't have 14 friends. Fuck. Dude, ain't nobody. <laughs> oh, it's so true. Dude, Fred, oh, Fred Durst and Christina Gagulera. She better kiss my grits. Dude, if she kissed my actual grits at No Coast, that would be better than Archer shitting in the driver's meeting. Mm. and on that note i have literally been going for an hour and a half i'm going to release scotch and a beer tomorrow night because i was stupid and didn't start this early enough today and had to go live because i suck but scotch and a beer tomorrow night about sema 2013 and me being ripped off by a talent agency for 10,000 US dollars, then trying to sue me over it because I owed them more than that. I don't know about Christina Gagulera. I'll have to check it out. I'll have to look at that. I, I don't, I, 
I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and end this live session of Scotch and a Beer. It's an hour and 35 minutes and 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40 seconds long. And Brandon, other Brandon. There's two Brandons. Brandon, Brandon versus Wicknick. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will release an actual scotch and a beer tomorrow night, but let's hang out again. Maybe at some point in the near future. I love you guys. I've literally three scotches to the wind and a beer. Dan is tanky. I'll see you guys next year after this other scotch and a beer comes out tomorrow, which you may or may not watch, but thank you guys. I'll catch you on the flip side. Officer Dan out dude no all thick is new new band you need to follow their instagram follow their youtube i don't even know if they have a youtube but they have a facebook all underscore thick with two c's don't listen to what the internet told you this beanie is a quicksilver vintage 2001 i'm bringing the brim back people Brim and a scotch with Officer Dan. Many love, much love. I'll see you guys tomorrow night, and then I'll see you next Monday because I will actually put out a scotch and a beer on time. Peace! Wait. Oh, my Splenda. My God. It's Officer Dan. 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 It's <laughs> Officer Dan. <sighs> Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Quicksilver beanie. 2001. Best beanie ever. Love you. Also, it's Officer Dan. Peace. <laughs>